Hello and welcome. Well, this is a bit of a different um, episode and not exactly or not entirely what I what I do. Anyway, um, I thought it is interesting and time to look into my um, ancestry in the sense of um, having ha having a DNA test done. I find that quite interesting. Um, so I just ordered it um, and um, when it arrives, we will do this together, send it off, and then um, um, discuss the, um, the the results, so to speak. So, <clears throat> what I know is that my family is originally um, from the Czech Republic, and um, when I moved to Dublin in the year two thousand, they had a sort of a Guinness shop, I think it was called. It was a shop where you could get all sorts of Irish uh, stuff, you know, like a tourist shop. Um, and I, I don't know if it was 2000 or 2001, but I hadn't been there long. And they had this section where you could fill in a form and then they would send it off um, to uh, research your um, ancestry for you all in writing. Um, can't find the the third, which was sort of a, an A3 thing that they sent me. Um, I did. I still have it. I will have a look. Anyway, the point is, it confirmed that uh, we actually are from the uh, Czech Republic. What what the family knows is that we settled um, or we came to Hamburg about 350 years ago, um, and in fact, my family is from northern Germany, Hamburg, even though I was born. Slap bang in the middle of Germany, <laughs> Frankfurt or Offenbach. Offenbach is a place right next to Frankfurt. Um, anyway, that's where I was born and was raised and grew up and kind of stuff. So, but I have um, family members and relatives in Hamburg. So we knew and we know that we actually um, arrived there first. We also know that um, my family name Janak has actually been mentioned by um, the king. Um, of the Czech Republic whenever it was that they had a king. Um, so the name Janak was mentioned, um, even though it's a bit of a weird one because Janak means son of John. So uh, how many sons of John are there? So again, it's not the most important thing to me whether or not the king has <laughs> mentioned us or not, but it is in the ancestral records. So. I do a lot of uh, numerology reports, I do a lot of astrology reports, um, which which can tell people a lot about themselves and which can highlight a lot of things that people just by default don't look at. And um, being a foreigner living abroad, I always feel to a certain extent, and it is by choice that I live abroad, but I do at times, <clears throat> actually quite, quite, quite regularly, <clears throat> As if I don't quite belong, if that makes sense. I have loads of really nice people, good friends, so I'm not knocking it. But, um, you know, being being German <laughs> or having my German traits um, that I sort of carry with me, um, you know, in, in, in England, um, can be difficult uh, for, for people, sort of my, my being in your face all the time, my prashness. <laughs> You know, um, so apparently you can take uh, the boy out of Germany, but you can't Germany, you can take Germany out of the boy, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I'm very intrigued by um, knowing um, what happened to uh, who I am. And it is interesting because I am a firm believer of um, reincarnation. And um, when, it look, when you look at shamanism, which is an umbrella term, um, so when you look at, at ancient beliefs, for want of a better word, so we believe we came here um, from the stars and we came here in a cloud in the shape of a whale. So the whale is our first mother. So we ended up in the water first and then went out from the water in, onto land and then we evolved and we're still evolving. And the point is that we have about 800 lives to live uh, to figure out all the stuff that we need to figure out. So it's a, it's a massive journey. And once this journey then comes to an end, um, we will simply carry on and move on somewhere else because we are truly immortal. So this is something that I have always lived by. Um, it also informs my spiritual work uh, quite a lot. 
And so um, the next step for me is to actually just um, really look into what uh, the DNA side of things can tell me about who I am, I suppose. And I wanted to share it with you. I, I watched quite a number of videos on, um, on YouTube uh, about people who have taken ancestry tests. And obviously there's so many different companies and stuff. Um, but for a lot of them, it was actually quite profound and, um, and sometimes even life-changing. So um, while I'm not expecting any, any, anything life-changing as such, um, I have always been very curious. Uh, also curious to find why I haven't settled. I'm 55 now and um, I just haven't settled. I don't feel like, like settling. If that, if that makes sense. What that means is that um, I have always been a person that um, enjoys traveling different places. While I do love getting to know the culture, in my mind, if, um, I don't know, a new partner showed up tomorrow and um, it happened uh, that this lady would be from a different place and asked me eventually if he would move there, I would probably say yes, because I truly believe that the universe will look after me no matter where I go, and it has so far. So I don't live in fear. I don't have any fear about the future, simply because there's also a lot of stuff that I cannot really um, control anyway. So I'm not giving in to this, oh my God, what if, what, what if this happens and what if I haven't got this? Um, it just doesn't enter my brain because it, it is anxiety that, that, that um, goes nowhere. Anyway, cut a long story short, um, let's have a look at um, the DNA test, how it all looks and what I need to do when it comes, which is the next part of this video. Sorry for a little bit of a long introduction, but I think it's important in the context of me as a being to just uh, talk about this for a little bit, right? So um, let's have a look at the sort of unboxing of the um, ancestry thingy bob, um, and then we'll send it off and um, look at the results. Okie dokie. Hello again. So um, the um, my heritage DNA thing has arrived today. Um, so I understand that I have to um, um, put it all up uh, um, online somehow. And then once this is all done, I have to um, I get an email back or something. Just wanted to say because I forgot to say that earlier. Um, that obviously I'm I'm not. Um, hoping to find anybody or something because um, I was fortunate enough to, to have uh, parents and uh, so I'm not missing <laughs> anything. This is for me to find out, you know, um, sort of where where my entire being is from, if that, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, so there's a DNA um, kit activation reminder. And then apparently there are uh, I'm not going to do this on, on video. Why would I have to swap this in front of you? But also, it's, I'm, I'm recording this on a Friday evening, so I don't know if I have to bring this um, to the post office rather quickly once this is all done, or if I should do this on Monday morning or something. Anyway, so how this works is you, you swap the insides of your cheeks, each side, right? You have two of them, kind of stuff. Then you break it off, put it in here, um, and then put it in in this thingy bob, well, I don't quite know what this is for. This thing, I'm gonna read this in a bit. <laughs> and then um, it's quite interesting. Um, this actually goes to um, America. Didn't know. Anyway, so I'm gonna, so it comes with this envelope. Um, so it's all pretty much ready to go after this. Um, okay, here, here's, here is explained. Um, I just want to show this to you because, you know, this is my first time doing this. So I, I thought it probably will be interesting to see. I saw a couple of videos where people had to sort of spit in a vial. I think personally, um, I didn't even know, you know, I mean, I just picked this up um, because it was uh, uh, was on offer. So it was a bit cheaper than, <laughs> than the others. Um, anyway, so um, I still think it's probably nicer to actually uh, swap the cheeks than put uh, spit into a, into a while and kind of stuff. Anyway, so how, what it says here is uh, activate your kit online. Do not skip this step. It is necessary to get your results, visit, blah, blah, blah. Open the test kit and lay out the unopened swaps, swaps and wilds on a clean surface. Okay, I can do that. 
Remove one cheek swab from its wrapper and use swab head to scrape the inside of one of your cheeks with rotating while rotating the swab for 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, that's all good. Um, open one vial and insert the swab inside. Swab end down. Once the swab touches the bottom of the vial, break the swab against the inside edge of the vial and the marked, marked back line, leaving the swab end okay. Close the vial. Make sure the vial caps are closed tightly. Place both vials on the cotton pad. Ah. They go on the cotton pad um, in, the bu in, the, in the bag and close the ziplock. Now place the bag in the enclosed address envelope and seal the envelope. Swap, swap your other cheek with the second swap. Insert the swap into the second while. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, don't understand. Swap your other cheek with the second swap. Insert the swap into the second while. Break the swap in off marker and close the file cap tightly. Oh, so see, I understood. I misunderstood that. So I have to do both. Yeah, lo logically in the same in the same um, in the same while, and then you put it into the DNA lab. So it doesn't. Point is, it doesn't say um, how fast you have to do this. Anyway, this video is time stamped. So if you feel like I don't give a shit how it's done, I just want to see the results. You know, feel free to sort of. <laughs> um, Skip, if that makes sense, but um, you know, like anybody else who gets this for the first time, there's tons of questions and you don't want to bloody mess it up, do you? <laughs> so I'm going to now um, activate the, the DNA kit before sending back my sample. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a Friday evening. Um, it doesn't quite say how long it takes, at least not on anything here, but from what I have gathered, it can be six to eight weeks, at least that's what I saw from the other. Um, I'll keep this card for your records. Oh, I got an activation code, right? I'm not returning this card. Okay, so, so I got this for my records. I'll uh, activate you. I'm just watching, wondering um, if it tells me anywhere here. It doesn't tell. Oh, here it is. Sorry, my, my bad. It does tell you. Expect the results on my heritage in four to six weeks. So. Um, I'm going to do all this without you having to watch me uh, uh, putting putting shit in my mouth, right? <laughs> and then I send it off. And then um, I see you in um, four to six weeks on that video. Whenever the next, um, <laughs> uh, when the results are in. Hi guys, just a bit of, a up, of an update. Hey sweetie. So apparently, um, I downloaded the My Heritage app, which is actually quite good. And um, so got a text just the other day, or notification just the other day, that um, it's not going to take much longer until the um, results are ready. As you can see on the other side of the screen here, um, just showing you that um, I also found uh, matches, which means, uh, you know, other relatives. And the reason why they're in there is just my father and my mother um, and myself um, are in there because my uh, half-brother Hans-Jürgen in Germany um, must have uh, had his DNA tested because his name shows up, but it's a hidden account. So I can't even contact him over there, which is not... What I what I wouldn't need to do anyway because obviously I'm in, I'm in contact with him. Point is, I wasn't even expecting um, new relatives. Um, I just wanted to say a few things about my heritage and 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 the whole process. Um, so I was told initially by the post office that it can take up to six days to get to the states, and I thought like, well, that's really a very short time. Um, in reality. I didn't hear anything from anyone in roughly three weeks or roughly three so roughly three weeks after me sending in my kit I thought um, maybe I should give my heritage a call just to see if they can uh, trace it uh, or anything like this um, or maybe it had arrived and so when you buy that set um, you right sweetie this is fidget say hello fidget so when they um, sell, sell you the kit, there is a phone number 
uh, uh, British one, so 00441. And um, so you can call them if you have any questions. And when I did that, the system or the voice there told me that it is just for paying customers. And I was like, well, I paid for the my heritage DNA kit. Clearly, I'm a, I'm a paying customer. Turns out that's not what they mean. It's only for people who pay more. Um, I don't quite know what what you put what you would pay more for. I remember them contacting me, asking me uh, uh, to 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 pay uh, fifty quid uh, to get. Um, information about uh, health risks and stuff. But since I, I've been a type 1 diabetic for 30 years, which fucked up my life somewhat, <laughs> I thought I don't really need that. In any case, I just wanted to say that um, the phone number itself then doesn't do anything if you just want to inquire about um, whether or not they could probably have a look. Um, because obviously you send that stuff in and you don't know how long it takes uh, for them to... Um, you know, put it into the system. In any case, just wanted to share this with you. Um, I'm not sure um, if this is the same with, with other providers, but um, to me, it felt like, so there's nothing I can do. I can't even contact them, um, even though there is a phone number, um, that because it took over three weeks, I thought like, okay, maybe, maybe the DNA kit is lost. Maybe I should you know, buy another one, maybe from another provider. So the, the point I'm making is there's loads of sorts that you have um, when you know it can take up to four, uh, four to six weeks um, before the information is there. And so I was not very happy that they provide a phone number that you cannot use then uh, because when you call them, you have to reach out the, um, the, the number you get the kit number that you get that I had to obviously uh, um, type in first to register so they could find me under that number and then told me well you're not a paying customer we're not going to talk to you so I don't know if this is this is um, uh, across the board but I just wanted you to know um, that this is um, what didn't quite sit right with me um, when I learned of that and now um, let's uh, wait until the um, Results are in, and then we we'll meet again. Hello and welcome. Well, the results are in, and I'm not surprised. It's obviously <laughs> European. And anyway, it's 69.5 percent. And in the first graphic, what shows up is obviously the Czech Republic, where we know the the name at least came from, and we know from what we can trace back that this is sort of where we started. This time around before the family then settled in Hamburg um, and then yes it's quite interesting that there's um, yes there's 18% Balkan but the, the, the Balkan regions are also sort of you know Bosnia Herzegovina so it's all pretty much European <clears throat> and um, but as you can see um, the German point Germany um, is the number one thing in my DNA and I quite find that interesting um, because you always think like, you know, what if I send this in and then they mess it up? Um, and obviously they didn't mess it up because obviously I am German. I knew it before. <clears throat> now it is confirmed. 69.5%. As a part of me, they kind of thought like, well, you know, what if I have 50% see where else I was, but there's nothing for me to now go and explore. And I'm not exactly um, sad about it. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is just interesting to me because obviously this is um, DNA and what it cannot inglu include um, is um, how far we've sort of gone away from where we came from. Um, so I obviously have been living abroad now for 22 years um, and um, a lot of my relatives, um, especially on my father's side, have now gone and... Um, or have decided to, to, to live in the States and they have done so for for six decades uh, or the like. So my, my one of my aunties just, aunties just turned 90 and she has been living in the States for about 60 years or something like this. So the point is, yes, we do all still uh, travel. We're still all nomads. I mean, I mean we, sort of the human race, um, everybody's just looking for um, greener grass and maybe a better 
a bit a shot at life and i have never been a fan of uh of of borders if that makes sense um so i always felt this is one blue planet and it is our home so um and because i always had this problem with um with racism and i when i grew up being born in 67 I was born into a multicultural Germany simply because when Germany lost the war in the Second World War, the, the country was in ruins. So, you know, we asked our good neighbors to help us rebuild it. <laughs> and then they stayed, if that makes sense. <coughs> I remember my brother is um, 15 years old, so he was born in the early 50s, 52. <coughs> and um, he told me once that he was literally in school with just Germans. While I was in school with uh, a lot of kids who were German, uh, you know, spoke German perfectly, uh, but whose parents came from um, other countries, you know, Spain, Turkey, Italy, um, Poland, Russia, whatever, you know. So we had um, a lot of, of other nations and nationalities in Germany when I grew up. And so I really enjoyed this. Um, the downside is a little bit when you then, um, as a child, become aware of the, the, the recent history and then you get, um, you know, you get confronted with all the, 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 the Nazis and all that kind of stuff. And you kind of feel really shocked by, by this. Um, so, yeah, um, not an easy legacy to live with um, being German at times, because obviously we have that reputation. And um, it has been thrown back into my face uh, more than, than once, you know, and I also have been uh, um, compared to the Nazis or called a Nazi, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, <clears throat> it's just one of those fuck you moments because I am who I am. And also, you know, just because um, my uh, forefathers, whatever you want, want to call them, little fuckers, um, did something horrific, I do not suffer. Uh, um, the the mistakes of these generations because I have got nothing to do with it and I haven't had anything to do with it. <clears throat> Point is, what my experience is, while I'm really, really fortunate, a lot of people do like me for who I am. Um, no matter where you go, when it comes to um, saying where you're from, uh, you know, because I, I studied uh, a lot um, where you meet a lot of people from other countries and and when it comes to Germany, people have a bit of a oh, mentality towards us. So I'm very sorry for my fellow uh, Germans um, that are in a similar boat um, or in the same boat in a different place. Um, it is just the way um, our history was. And um, people, you know, probably rightly so, hold grudges. And so the Germans per se, we are not liked. <laughs> um, much if that makes sense but i have a lot of good friends i'm liked <clears throat> and also it's not really all that important to me <laughs> um personally um because i'm fucking awesome in any case <laughs> i really enjoyed putting this together it allowed me to reflect on my life it also allowed me to sort of be reminded of uh, of the the whole part where my, my name was from and, and you know and I said this in the intro. Um, so uh, what I want to say is like <coughs> I thought and I think having had this uh, done and have had having had this experience is quite interesting because somehow it it reconnected me to who I am on a larger scale, if that makes sense, hard to, hard to describe. All I'm saying is I would highly recommend it. I know a couple of years ago it was the latest rage, like, oh, awesome, I want to know who I am. Um, but it's not a party game. It's really about finding out, you know, who am I, right? What is inside me? Um, and also I noticed the one thing which is also very important. Um, my ethnicity doesn't define me, doesn't have to define me at all. And yet these traits, uh, the Germanic traits um, are all mine. <laughs> what I what I found funny is I obviously just read through um, the the text there, and um, when it comes to when it came to um, a little blurb about um, the the Europeans, the sixty nine point five percent Europeans, it says that we take food very seriously, and I love eating. So 
<laughs> in any case, thank you all for watching. This was quite an interesting um, experience. I'm planning at some stage, even though I have no real feeling towards the Czech Republic or, or, or their people, it's not a country that I have been made aware of ever, if that makes sense. But I do realize and recognize <clears throat> that it comes up and came up in my history quite a bit, that makes sense. So I think I'm, um, I should go there, just have a bit of a, uh, a wander around um, and feel the energy of the place as it is now in the 21st century. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I found that really, really interesting. Like I said, not surprised, 69.5%, you know, um, European, uh, Northern and Western European, not surprised. And um, thank you all for, for watching this um, never ending thingy bob here. <laughs> I'm ending it now. Um, again, thank you so much. Have a lovely day and we'll see you soon.